how many hours on average do you think an athlete needs to train before they're ready to compete professionally in a league like the NHL, the NBA, even the Olympics? Well, the famous Canadian journalist Malcolm Gladwell wrote a book called Outliers, The Story of Success. And he looked at the lives and the careers of some of the most successful people on the planet, athletes and musicians and business owners. And this was his conclusion. In order to become a master or an expert in your field or at your craft, you will need to spend at least 10,000 hours training intensively. This is what will begin to set you apart from the rest of the pack. So for example, he looked at the life of Michael Phelps, the famous Olympic swimmer who to this day continues to hold the world record for most medals won in the Olympics, 28 medals. At the age of seven, Phelps was already swimming competitively. From the age of 11 to the age of 16, Phelps trained every single day for four hours. But time spent training is only part of the equation when we're looking at success in the field of athletics. It also involves diet and desire to win and discipline and self-control and willpower and overcoming doubt in your life. And so when we're watching TV, we're watching the internet, we see these athletes competing professionally. What we're seeing is the fruit of all their blood, sweat, and tears. Training is hard work. Training is not glamorous. Training often involves early mornings. It involves difficult decisions about priorities in life, what you're going to eat, whether or not you're going to hang out with your friends and family, or if you're going to train instead. But why would someone put themselves through this, this pain? And why would they deny themselves earthly pleasures, uh, junk food, a morning to sleep in? Well, I think you know the answer. It's because they're chasing a dream. They want to be the fastest and the strongest and the most skilled. They want to be the champion. But is it all that surprising? You know, the history of the Olympic Games goes back all the way into the ancient world, even to the times before Jesus Christ. It goes back to ancient Greece. The ancient Greeks held Olympics. They held competitions in running and wrestling and boxing and chariot racing and throwing javelins and throwing discus. And then the winner would be crowned. And so when the Apostle Paul was writing his letters to the churches during the New Testament era, he would often draw on the world of sports and athletics to teach Christians how to live and to teach Christians how to follow Jesus Christ. And so in 1 Corinthians 9, verses 24 through 27, the Apostle Paul writes, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. So is Paul saying that unless we train hard enough and work hard enough as Christians, then we won't receive the crown of life? That we won't be saved from our sins? It almost sounds like that at first reading, doesn't it? But you have to realize that when you read the Bible, and this shows up in another letter from the Apostle Paul, Ephesians 2, we, we read that there is nothing we can do to earn our salvation. There's nothing we can do to save ourselves from our sins. Salvation from our sins is by grace alone. It's a gift. It's a present from God in Jesus Christ. We can't earn it by doing good works. There's nothing we can do. We cannot brag about anything. But at the same time, the Apostle Paul, he fully expects that people who believe in Jesus Christ 
as their Savior, well, they will also want to follow Jesus Christ as their Lord, to follow in his ways. Why? Because believers have been given new hearts by the Holy Spirit. And so believers, we, we look forward with certainty. We fully expect that we will receive the eternal crown of life when we die. When we reach the end of our life, Jesus Christ will be waiting at the finish line and he will crown us with the crown of life. But as long as we're alive, we're not there at the finish line yet, are we? We continue to run this race. We continue to need to train. So the Apostle Paul, he turns to the world of athletics. He looks to these professionally trained athletes who continue to train so hard, who discipline themselves and deprive themselves of earthly pleasures so that they can maybe potentially achieve and win a crown. They might not even win this crown, but they're pushing for that and they're, they're pushing their bodies for it and they're, they're training hard every day for this, that one day they might be crowned with, with a garland crown, pine needles on their heads, and for a moment they might enjoy glory as the crowds in the stadium celebrate what they have done. And now compare that to the crown that every believer, you and me, not just one winner, but every believer will receive at the end of our life. It's an unfading crown. It's the crown of a resurrected body. It's a crown that we will enjoy forever and ever, eternal life in the presence of God and the angels and every believer as we celebrate what Jesus has done for us. And so as we read these words from Corinthians, we're presented with a question. If athletes who are pursuing a crown that will fade and that is temporary, if they train so hard, then don't you think Christians who await a gospel certainty, a crown of eternal life, do you not think that we should be training even harder and taking this far more seriously than professional athletes? The Apostle Paul writes, I strike a blow against my body. In other words, I, I fight against the sinful temptations and tendencies of my heart. I, I bring my body and my heart into submission for Jesus Christ because he's my Lord and Savior. And so like a, a professional athlete, the Apostle Paul, he, he demonstrated self-discipline. He denied himself the fleeting, sinful pleasures of this world because he had his eyes set on eternity where he would receive the crown of life at the finish. And so as he ran through life, he, he did everything he could to, to get rid of sin in his life, sin that Hebrews 12 so easily entangles our feet as we're running the race. The Apostle Paul, who was saved by grace, continued to train and to compete by grace so that one day he could receive the crown of life by grace. And you and me, we are being called to do the same thing. And in all of this, God, he doesn't leave us alone. He, he doesn't tell us to do this in our own strength because we can't. And he gives us his spirit. But there's more. He gives more grace. How are we going to know what it means to follow Jesus Christ? How are we going to know what is sinful in this world? How are we going to know what is pleasing to God? Well, he gives us a training manual. The Bible. 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17 says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. But then he gives more grace. He gives us prayer. He says, talk to me. Tell me your troubles. Tell me what you're struggling with. Tell me what you're having difficulty removing from your life as you follow Jesus Christ. And as we pray to him and as we ask him for strength and guidance and help, God promises that he will help us run in this race so that we will receive the crown of life. And then God, he, he places us in a community of believers. We don't even run this race alone. They run alongside us. They are fellow runners. They are coaches. And we can speak to them about their struggles and their trials, what weighed them down, and how the Lord in his grace helped them to overcome those struggles. And best of all, we can talk about that crown of life that all of us, that we are looking forward to receiving one day at the finish line.
So let's keep this in mind. Training, it's hard work. And often it's not glamorous. The world looks at the life of a Christian and they can't understand why we would behave the way we do. But we keep our eyes on the prize. We fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who's waiting for us at the finish line. And one day, he will give us the crown of life.